Hi class, Professor Seeger here. In this video, I will be going over a couple ways reading literature is different than reading other sorts of writing. In this lecture, I will also go over various strategies to help you read more deeply and analytically. This, in turn, will give you more interesting things to write about. Before you view this lecture, it is best if you are familiar with the story A&P by John Updike, which is the first story on the course reading list. At this point in the program, please remove yourself from all distractions. Make sure you have a pen and a pad of paper to take notes during the presentation. If I go too quickly, please feel free to stop and rewind as often as you need to. Enjoy! You read literature differently than the morning paper or textbook reviews for chapters. You read more attentively and with various focal points. Literature demands a personal connection, a creative and analytical investment. We are talking actual brain work here. You need to read with an attention to details. Remember, details are important. I might even suggest that you underline in your book the parts of the text you suspect are important or parts that seem to resonate with importance or meaning for you. Not only does this practice make important passages easier to find when you are writing your papers, it also makes subsequent readings more productive. Most authors are looking, first and foremost, to entertain readers. They want us to have an emotional and sometimes physical reaction. These reactions are important in giving us clues as to what we analyze. It also gives us a chance for reflection. Why were you so angry when Sammy quit his job at the A&P? Why was I so hopeful? We can compare our experiences with those of others who often lived radically different lives a long time ago. The most basic thing I can suggest about this stage of the reading process is that it teaches you to trust your gut. If you like a character that does horrible things, don't dismiss that. It is most likely important. Look for the source of your reaction. What in your experiences made you feel this way? What in the text made you feel this way? These basic questions start asking you to look for logic and emotion, which leads to an important stage in the reading process. Experience. Ah! Mimes! What is your knee-jerk reaction? Most folks I know find mimes a little creepy. I have also known people who find great joy in mimes. This is all due, I feel, to two things. First, our experiences with mimes and clowns. For example, if you have watched Stephen King's It, a horror movie where the main antagonist takes the shape of a clown, you are likely a little creeped out right now. If, however, you come from a family of mimes, this picture might make you happy. Second, we need to consider the context of the mime. Where is the mime? In the park? Peeking into your back window? Walking down a dark alley? These contexts are important and lead to the next step in reading. Interpretation. Usually, you want to get past the I liked it and I didn't like it phase and get to something more analytical. You don't have to like a text to analyze it. We observe a text or read it carefully, noticing details. Then we make personal connections. It is important to remember that not all of these connections are dependent on familiarity. We make inferences. We can guess as to how to read and interpret a text. Then we make a conclusion about what a text means through all this evidence we collect. These are all steps that lead up to interpretation. Interpretation occurs when all these elements overlap, when you think both emotionally and logically. Remember, there is no one right interpretation. There are common ones and less common ones. For my money, the less common ones are typically more interesting. But remember, your interpretation still needs to have supporting evidence in the text. Also, your interpretations can't blatantly ignore parts of the text. It is by approaching a text in this way that we begin moving into analysis, which is a good thing. 
Analysis occurs when we break down and examine the components of our interpretation and the text you are examining. Interpretation and analysis aren't magical things. They are, however, parts of a process that involves many small steps. Typically, the more often you read a text, the better you get at interpreting it, and the more subtle nuances and depth you'll find in it. That's just how literature is. First, however, you need a background in literary elements and devices. I will get to those in future PowerPoints. Trust me. This won't ruin your love of the text any more than being a mechanic will ruin your love of cars. Of course, if you are reading for pleasure, you can do what you want. But for this class, I'm asking you read more carefully. Look for connections between the reader and the text, between elements of the text, between the text and the world, and so on. What does phone tree have to do with this image? Nothing. The reader has to make connections. Here's my attempt at interpreting this text. We know a phone tree is a way of contacting a large number of people. Therefore, this might have to do with communication or miscommunication. That and community. I might guess that the rhubarb pies recipe was communicated through a series of phone calls. And with each phone call, the recipe changed slightly due to various efforts of interpretation by each caller. I imagine actual, the actual pie recipe being significantly different than the original. Now, this picture is not literature, but it does show how inference might turn into interpretation. Is this the only interpretation of this image and the question? No, of course not. There are many possibilities. When we begin the process of evaluating a work of literature, when we begin the process of evaluating a work of literature or some other text, we consider the various values and beliefs the work promotes. Since values is such a vague term, let us define it as the attitude of the work and almost always the author towards the society and world the text was written in. In this way, science fiction author Kurt Vonnegut can write about distant futures and still be writing about American social and religious beliefs. It is often important to identify the tone of the work and the background of the author to get a sense of his or her values, and therefore the values promoted by the work. I have divided the term values into four categories, although there might very well be more categories than that. This image is a sort of map of one individual's personal values. As we can see, some things are more animated and therefore of more value to this particular individual, whoever it may be. Of course, if you were to do your own personal values map, it would likely look quite different. There may be some similarities. Most of us value family and friends. We value education, etc. But there will also be significant differences and it is our different experiences that work to develop our values. Therefore, it goes without saying that on one important level, literary interpretation is a personal thing. These personal interpretations are valuable. This is where the discipline of English is different than the sciences that rely on precise identical answers. English literary interpretation is all about the exploration. there are more things to consider when interpreting a text than the reader's experience, especially in an academic environment. Personal interpretation and evaluation are still vitally important, but usually they need to be combined or mediated with multiple perspectives or other possible interpretations. Remember, if you want to have some quality thought and analysis in your paper, you need to include multiple perspectives. The bullseye graphic here suggests that the author's context is most important. And often, the author's intention and background are important things to consider, but they are not the only things. It is true, however, 
that your interpretation of the story should rationally make sense to other readers and, of course, your teacher. And you, the student, need to be able to convince us your interpretation is valid. There is no shame in changing your initial interpretation of a text. My interpretations of texts are constantly changing. Remember, your interpretation is still important, but it needs to be rational too. And sometimes initial emotional reactions are not rational. Critics or secondary sources and interpretations work to help add alternate interpretations. Illuminate subtle connections to the text you cannot make on your own. You do not have to completely agree with critics. They work as a stepping stone to more complex and sophisticated interpretations. The most important aspect of analyzing and interpreting literature is asking good questions. Consider why things are the way they are and please assume there are reasons why things are the way they are. One thing to remember is that although the author's intent and background are helpful, they are not all important. If you offer a logical interpretation of a text, I will accept it. If your analysis or paper asks interesting questions of the text, you've already won half of your battle. What I mean by important and interesting questions is that you ask questions which are complex, not answerable in terms of yes or no, or single words. Of course, you will ask these simple questions of the text, but you will also understand that these obvious questions need to lead to more complex ones that give you an opportunity to show subtle connections, your depth of thought, and critical analytical skills. Let's take the story A and P, for example. A simple question might be, who is the protagonist? Of course, the answer is Sammy, the 18-year-old narrator who quits his job as a grocery clerk because the manager insulted three girls in swimwear. But this might, and really should, lead to a more interesting question like, what is Sammy's motivation for quitting his job? This might foster an obvious answer, to impress the girls who, incidentally, didn't even notice Sammy's symbolic act. However, if an answer is too obvious, it is probably only part of the answer. There are more interesting reasons for Sammy quitting than just his hormones, if you notice the details. Ideally, simpler questions will lead to a complex one like, what does Sammy's quitting his job suggest about American culture in the late 1950s? The trick is to think beyond the most obvious or simple interpretation. Don't get me wrong, sometimes a simple interpretation is the right one. But you should at least attempt to consider other perspectives and possibilities to keep asking better and better questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Now, as you read the stories for discussion board, consider the multiple ways they might be interpreted. What moments point to your individual interpretation? What points contradict your interpretation? Remember, keep asking questions and keep looking for answers that marry your emotional reaction with reason.